do know. Uh, we know that uh, from my lab in two mouse models of cancer, one was breast cancer, one was liver cancer. Yeah. Um, and this was done in the lab that's co-run by Lindsay Wu down at uh, Sydney, that NMN did not accelerate any cancer in those two models. In fact, in the breast cancer model, it actually slowed the growth of cancer. Okay. So in my hands, we haven't seen any evidence for it. Uh, we have fed NMN to mice for many, many months, I think. Actually, we, we fed it for them for the whole lifespan, and there was no increased spontaneous cancer. Yeah? Okay, so where does this idea come from? There are two reasons to question the possibility of cancer. Uh, again, they're in mice. So one is comes from a study that we showed that NMN boosts blood vessel formation. Okay. So we didn't look in cancer, but we looked in muscle. And when you give NMN to a mouse, an old mouse, it will have more mus uh, more blood vessels and it will have better blood flow. And we also published with, with another group that the brain gets better blood flow as well. Okay. Which is all good for aging. Um, it may not be good for cancer. If you have a big tumor that needs blood flow, uh, I would be cautious, very cautious actually, that NMN or maybe resveratrol, I'm not sure about resveratrol, it hasn't been studied. Um, but uh, so that's one concern. If, if I had a big tumor, I probably wouldn't take NMN just to be safe. Okay. Um, and then the second thing was um, there was a study that came out of Washington University in uh, St. Louis. And what they, they showed in this study was that if you took a brain cancer cell line and you knocked down NAD levels, so you, you got rid of the enzyme that makes NAD. Okay. Now, now those cells didn't grow very well and they didn't make, uh, it was a glioblastoma in the brain. Okay. Okay. All right. So what does that prove? Well, it proves that cells need NAD to survive, to grow well. We knew that a hundred years ago. That's not a surprise. Yeah. But the experiment that they needed to do was to increase NAD and show if that causes cancer, which they didn't show. They didn't test that. Yeah. And where, what happened was the publicity department at the university wrote a press release that says that this work shows that NAD can cause cancer, which is not what they showed. Uh, and it, it, it went all over the internet, unfortunately, which is a misinterpretation of that data. Good to know. Right. So basically, in simple language, if you take four wheels off a car, it won't drive. But if you put six wheels on a car, will it go six times faster? No. Well, or, you know, put eight wheels on a car, will it go twice as fast? No, it won't. So you cannot interpret an experiment that goes one direction and say, oh, if you do the opposite, the opposite will happen. Yeah. So that's why uh, I continue to take NMN. I haven't seen anything that concerns me. If, it, if I did, you know, I'm not crazy. I would stop immediately and tell the world that I've stopped taking it. Um, and my, my father as well. I, I certainly wouldn't want my father to harm himself at age 80. Um, and then there's the clinical trials. We've been doing safety studies with NAD boosting molecules. Other labs, probably four other labs have done this in humans and not seen anything yet. But, you know, again, I'm a scientist, so I would say uh, we need long-term studies. We need to test for five years and look at thousands of people, and that would tell us if there's a worry. Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, that explains it. That explains it. Yeah, so there is a theory that decreased NAD in tumors would actually prevent the PARP enzymes uh, from repairing tumors DNA and hence make the tumor more sensitive to chemotherapy. So this is why PARP inhibitors actually used for, uh, for, for treatment 
affecting cancers. But um, we actually have evidence that uh, in mice, there is no increase in tumor growth when taking anima, NMN. And this has been shown in multiple studies. And not only that, but um, in humans, there was a study uh, where uh, participants that previously had skin cancer, um, after the, the, the cancers were removed, they were uh, taking NAD boosters. And not only there was no stimulation of, of new growth of cancerous cells, but they, they, uh, it, it looked like the, the NAD boosting supplementation basically um, made healthy cells to grow um, to, to grow faster. So this is really interesting. And the reason why cancer and NMN are, are, are brought up together sometimes is that um, in the biology of aging and in the biology of cancer, there are some similarities. So there are some, some genes that are upregulated, such as uh, HIF1, so, so this is a hypoxia gene, and so on. There is a complex uh, role of NAD in cancer, but however, what we're seeing is that it looks like we still don't understand the mechanism very well, but what we're seeing in terms of the evidence is that NAD supplementation definitely doesn't cause cancer. It's important to always say that in many biological process, there are some processes that we still don't understand how they work and they, sure. they could potentially um, you know, uh, act as a double-edged sword, but this doesn't mean that everyone would be affected. So for instance, you know, there is this study with the uh, uh, with the skin cancer that has shown that NAD um, boosters are not um, you know are 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 not bad for uh, for patients that previously had skin cancer. However, this doesn't mean that more research doesn't need to be done. Of course, we need to kind of investigate different kind of cancers and how they are affected um, and so on. And also, there are other processes that could uh, that uh, could be beneficial in one context but not in other, but this doesn't mean that they are bad processes. So the same applies to, let's say, the process of photophagy in the cell, which is the process by which the cell is kind of clearing up uh, toxins and the junk proteins that are floating around in the cell, because autophagy is a very, very beneficial process. And um, in cancer, in some cancers, actually, um, they're hijacking this mechanism of autophagy in order to survive. So wow. it's not that the autophagy process is really bad for you. It's actually really, really good. And, you know, this is why people do intermittent fasting and all these things. But yeah. uh, in some particular instances, it might be, um, it might be bad. However, we know how to modulate this. There are some autophagy inhibitors that could be applied um, locally and so on. And, you know, this goes on with, with, with um, th this applies to different processes in the cell. And there is no such thing as categorizing one particular process in the cell as being very bad in all contexts. We just need more research. However, um, just to summarize, uh, definitely the data that uh, I'm seeing so far look very, very good. And, you know, even in, uh, in a mouse cancer model where mice already had tumors and they were supplemented with NMN, the tumors didn't show accelerated growth. So this was a really nice study as well.